In the United States, nearly 63% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Yes, you heard that right, 63%. It's a startling reality, isn't it? The fact is a significant chunk of people are in a continuous financial hustle, barely making ends meet. Now you might be wondering why managing money seems like a Herculean task for so many. Well, we are about to dive headfirst into this financial rabbit hole. So why do so many people struggle with money? Let's dive into it. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the systemic factors. Now, these are the big external forces that can make managing personal finances feel like you're trying to climb Everest in flip-flops. Take income inequality, for instance. It's like being at a potluck where some folks are feasting on lobster and others are making do with a single breadstick. The reality is, some individuals simply don't earn enough to cover their basic needs, let alone save or invest. Then there's the issue of access, or rather the lack of it. Picture this, you're living in a community where the nearest bank is miles away, or perhaps there's no bank at all. This is a stark reality for many underserved communities, where limited access to financial services is a major hurdle. Think of it as trying to run a marathon, but your starting line is a dozen miles behind everyone else's. And let's not forget about the financial boogeyman, predatory lending practices. Imagine being desperate for a loan, only to fall into a trap of sky-high interest rates. It's like needing a lifeboat but getting handed an anchor instead. These exploitative practices are a significant systemic factor that can leave individuals drowning in debt. To add some numbers to the story, a report from the United Nations states that close to 10% of the world's population lives on less than $2 a day. Meanwhile, according to the World Bank, around 1.7 billion adults globally are unbanked, meaning they don't have access to basic financial services. And as per the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, one in five U.S. consumers fall prey to predatory loans each year. So, systemic issues are a huge hurdle. But what else is there? Well, buckle up, because we're about to dive into the knowledge and skills gap in our next scene. Remember, understanding the problem is the first step towards finding a solution. So let's keep going, shall we? Ever felt like you're reading a foreign language when looking at financial documents? You're not alone. Imagine for a moment that you're a world-class chef. You've got the finest ingredients, top-notch cookware, a state-of-the-art kitchen, but there's one little problem. You've never learned how to read a recipe. Sounds a bit problematic, doesn't it? That's precisely the situation many people find themselves in when trying to navigate their finances. They have the necessary tools, a steady income, a savings account, but lack the recipe, or in this case, the financial education to put it all together. This is where the financial literacy gap comes into play. It's like a massive canyon separating people from the land of financial stability. This isn't just about knowing the difference between a stock and a bond. It's about understanding how to budget, how to save, how to invest wisely. It's about grasping the concept of compound interest and the long-term effects of high interest loans. It's about knowing how to read the financial weather, so to speak, and having the ability to adjust your financial sales accordingly. And let's not forget about the limited access to financial advice. Imagine walking into a fancy restaurant, looking at the menu, and having no idea what any of the dishes are. You'd probably ask the waiter for recommendations, right? But when it comes to financial matters, that waiter, or in this case, a financial advisor, can be incredibly hard to come by. And even if you do find one, their advice often comes with a hefty price tag. So, it's like trying to cook a gourmet meal without a recipe, in a kitchen where the appliances are speaking a different language, and there's no helpful waiter in sight. Is it any wonder that some people struggle with their personal finances? This isn't about pointing fingers or laying blame. It's about identifying the gaps in our knowledge and skills and figuring out how to bridge them. Because at the end of the day, we're all just trying to whip up a decent financial future for ourselves and our loved ones. It's hard to manage something you don't understand, right? But there's more to it. Money is emotional. It's tied to our feelings of security, worth, and even our identity. Now, that's a statement you don't hear every day, right? But it's true. Our personal and emotional factors play a significant role in how we manage our finances. Let's explore this a bit more. Imagine you're at a store and you see this great-looking jacket. You know you don't need it, but something inside you screams, buy it. That, my friends, is impulsive spending, a common issue for many. It's like a cookie jar that you can't resist. You know too many cookies aren't good for you, but you still reach out for one, or two, or maybe three. Then, there are mental health issues. Anxiety, depression, or trauma can create a fog around financial decisions. It becomes challenging to think clearly, to plan, or even to act. It's like trying to solve a puzzle while being blindfolded. 
Not an easy task, is it? Lastly, there's the lack of financial goals. Without a destination in mind, any road will get you there. But where is there? Without clear financial goals, it's easy to drift aimlessly, spend unwisely, and lose sight of long-term financial health. It's like going on a road trip without a map or GPS. You might enjoy the ride, but will you end up where you want to be? These personal and emotional factors are like invisible strings, pulling us in different directions when it comes to managing our money. And while they are a part of who we are, they don't have to control us. With awareness, understanding, and the right tools, we can learn to navigate these challenges and make better financial decisions. But personal factors are only part of the story. Let's delve deeper. Because, like an iceberg, what's visible above the surface is only a small part of the whole picture. The systemic, cultural, and societal factors lurking beneath can also significantly impact our ability to manage our personal finances. So, ready to dive in? Money talks, but in some cultures it whispers. Let's unravel the impact of cultural and societal factors on personal finance management. Firstly, intergenerational poverty is a complex issue that entangles people in a cycle of financial hardship. Imagine a family where grandparents, parents, and now the children have all lived in poverty. It's akin to running a race with weights tied to your ankles, making it a Herculean task to break free from the chains of financial instability. Next, we move on to the cultural attitudes towards money. In some cultures, discussing finances is as taboo as serving a vegan a beef burger. This can create a veil of secrecy around money, making it difficult for individuals to seek advice or even understand the basics of managing finances. Picture a scenario where you're trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle in the dark. That's what it's like trying to navigate personal finance without open discussions about money. Lastly, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Social pressure to spend. Ever felt the irresistible urge to buy that trendy phone just because your friend got one? That's consumerism at its finest, my friends. It's like a puppeteer pulling the strings, making us dance to the tune of overspending and debt. So when we look at why some people struggle with managing their finances, it's essential to understand that it's not just about being good with money. It's a tangled web of intergenerational poverty, cultural attitudes, social pressures, and so much more. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's cube while blindfolded and upside down. But remember, understanding these factors is the first step in overcoming them. It's not about pointing fingers, but about shedding light on these issues to create a more inclusive and understanding financial environment. So it's not just about being good with money, it's about all these factors combined. So what can we do about all this? How can we make managing money easier for everyone? Well, the first step is financial education. It's the cornerstone of financial independence. We should strive to equip everyone with the knowledge to navigate their finances confidently from budgeting basics to the ins and outs of investing. Next up is financial inclusion. Let's ensure everyone has access to essential financial services no matter where they live. From rural areas to urban centers, banking and financial advice should be within reach. And let's not forget about consumer protection. We need to safeguard individuals from predatory practices that can lead to a cycle of debt. It's time to put an end to high interest loans and deceptive financial products. Lastly, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, poverty. Addressing the root causes of poverty is key to enabling financial stability. This could mean advocating for wage increases, affordable housing or better access to quality education. But don't just take my word for it. I encourage you to delve deeper into these topics. Learn more, get involved, and use your newfound knowledge to make a difference. Whether it's educating a friend, supporting a local initiative, or lobbying for policy changes, every effort counts. After all, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Remember, everyone has the potential to be financially savvy. It's about having the right tools, resources, and support. So, what will you do to make a difference? As we wrap up this deep dive into financial literacy, remember that each one of us has an important role to play. It starts with education, then moves to action. Perhaps you'll start by reading a book on personal finance, or maybe you'll volunteer at a local organization that promotes financial literacy. You might even decide to start a conversation about money with your friends or family, breaking the taboo and opening the lines of communication. The important thing is to start somewhere. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on personal finance. We'll continue to unravel the mystery of money, breaking it down into understandable, actionable steps. 
and we want you to be part of that journey. Remember, change doesn't happen overnight. It's a process, and every step you take brings you closer to your goal. So let's take that first step together. See you in the next video.